Little Evil. This was just added to Netflix today. I was actually going to watch this last night when it was released. I usually try to watch the movies and whatnot at midnight. I've done no tons of their shows and movies and whatever. And I just honestly forgot. And I watched that fucking dreadful Be Afraid movie instead last night. I definitely wish I was watching this because this is much better than that. Um, I enjoyed this movie. I originally, when it started, it was like 20, 30 minutes in, I was like really into it, and I was like, oh man, this is going to be great. Um, and then it kind of just mellowed out, and, you know, just kind of gradually went to okay for the rest of the film, and it kind of hurt, it, it hurt my experience with it a lot, and it's kind of a bummer because I really, really was enjoying the movie. And it wasn't that the movie got bad. It didn't. I feel like the joke maybe had just run its course. And there wasn't enough going on from that point on that was all that different and unique and interesting enough to make me continue to keep going along with this continuing joke. Now, the movie is about a real estate agent played by Adam Scott, and he marries a woman, and she has a five-year-old son, and he is evil, or at least he perceives him that way, and things are going on around that make it seem like he is, and, you know, it goes downhill from there. Now, this movie has a ton of homages, for sure. The ones that I caught were, you know, The Omen, Poltergeist, Shining, Da Vinci Code. Uh, those are the ones I definitely caught. Uh, if there was more, I didn't see them, but um, there's, uh, there's probably a couple I missed. Um, now, the things that I liked about this movie, I thought that I thought that Adam Scott really played his character very well. He was very good in the movie. He played off of all the situations, you know. Every ridiculous situation, his reactions to them are great. He seems to be the only character in this movie that's grounded mostly in reality. Now, this is from the same director as Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely one of the better horror comedies to be released in a while. Um, and of course that intrigued me, uh, because Netflix does give complete creative control to their, to their directors. To their, so there's really no excuse and they get to have free reign. Um, and Dale makes an appearance in this movie, the actor that plays Dale, and his part is funny, but he's that's it. I mean, he's only in it for like a minute, which was a shame because I thought he would come back later and his role would be a little more substantial and it would be funny. And, and what he did get on the screen was funny, but it was so, so little. Other people who made an appearance in this movie, Evangeline Lilly, you know, always gotta love some Hobbit, Tariel, or as most people know her, is Lost, but um, the big Hobbit Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, and then Donald Faison from Faison, Faison, and for, uh, Scrubs, Chris Turk, love that movie, love that show, and he was good in it, um, and, and, uh, you know, Evangeline was good in it as well, I mean, there wasn't anyone that I was like, ugh, I wish they were in, Clancy Brown was in this, from Shawshank Redemption, um, everyone played their roles fine, um, I also really liked the support group, when he has to go to the dad, the stepdad support group, I thought that the banter between all the dads in there were fun. It was really funny. That was actually the funniest part for me. The supporting cast in this movie is good. You know, as I said, really, the main characters and then the woman that he works with who, you know, is, is trying to be a man and is also a stepdad in this movie. She was funny. Um, but this is one of those kinds of comedy where um, 
I was more smiling throughout the movie than laughing. There was definitely a couple moments where I laughed. But for the most part, it was like a comedy bit would happen and it would just be like, hmm, hmm. that was cute, that was, that was cute. And that was really all I did during the last half of this movie. It was just little smiles. And like, okay, you know, we're kind of going through the motions and the story's kind of unfolding. And there wasn't just, there really wasn't any punch. There wasn't anything. For the first, like, 20 minutes, I didn't even think this was going to be rated R. And the only thing that makes this rated R is, you know, people are saying fuck here and there. But outside of that, there's no gore. I mean, the kid, they make the kid look up, they make the kid look exactly like you know, Damien in the original Omen movie. Um, so, with it being the guy who did Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, and this being a horror comedy, I was definitely expecting a lot more fun gags. And there's zero gore in this movie. I mean, none which I was really, really surprised about. Now, my memory of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil isn't amazing, I suppose, but I guess there isn't a ton of gore in that movie either. It's more just kind of implied deaths, like the guy jumps into the wood chipper and blood comes out and whatnot. So I guess that that's not a super gory movie, so I guess I, I didn't, I don't know, I, I guess I was expecting it. I, I did, I don't think, that it would help this movie dramatically by any means because there isn't really many uh there's only like one or two deaths in this movie so yeah this is this is primarily a comedy with horror elements i mean it's, it's a spoof but i don't want it to seem like it's a slapstick because it isn't it is not slapsticky it's more along the the way of tucker and dale that kind of you know silly humor but not in where things are going on around you that are fantastical and ridiculous and people aren't reacting to them how normal people would react to them so it is outside of the realm of reality but not so much like the, to the point of slapstick like a naked gun or something um that's really all I have to say I mean I think that if you if you liked Tucker and Dale that this would be appealing to you. Um, maybe the jokes will hit a lot harder with you. And I had a friend I just saw posted that they loved it. So, I mean, it's definitely, I don't think it's a bad movie. I enjoyed it. But for being a comedy that kept throwing out jokes right and left, I didn't find myself laughing all that much. And if a comedy doesn't hit on its humor, and I'm not really super intrigued by the story because the story is kind of, you know, the same old, same old. Uh, I guess it's kind of a failure in a way, but I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's a cute movie. <laughs> now, it's not really the, you know, not really the word you want to hear when it comes to a comedy horror, but it's what it is. It's almost like a family film. Without the F-bombs, I really feel like this could have been a family film, straight up. Take out the fucks, and you'd basically have a family film. It's a sweet, cute, like their relationship is between the son and this and that. I really feel like, yeah, I feel like if they they restructured, they just took out, you could sell this as a PG-13 family film. So. That might turn you guys off immediately, and I totally understand. It would probably turn me off, but I'm not hate I'm not mad that I watched it, but it was a little bit of a letdown.